going on guys? We're back with another video. Today we're going to be talking about probably the, my most favorite car that I've owned. My 2003 Subaru Impreza WRX wagon. I had originally purchased this car almost four years ago down in an auction in Hawaii. Now this was through insurance auto auctions which some of you may be familiar with. It's a uh, insurance salvage auction. So what's pretty cool about that is sometimes depending on the level of damage and things that you understand about the car, uh, you can actually score cars for very, very cheap. Old Bella here is uh, no exception. She was picked up for $1,100 plus fees. So after everything, approximately $1,360, I believe. Um, I didn't take a look at the receipt. I still have the original receipt from the day I bought it. Now, I wasn't even in the market for this car, and there's actually kind of a funny story behind it, but uh, we'll get into that momentarily. For quite a few years, my father and I had been going to insurance auto auctions out in Hawaii, picking up cars for pretty cheap, fixing them up, and selling the ones that we deemed were good. And when we were at one of the auctions one day, we saw that there was a salvage certificate, which is basically a proof of ownership without a physical title. They want you to recertify the vehicle before it goes on the road, which is a remarkably scarily easy process. So that in mind, we were at the auction that day and there are people there that pretty much buy anything that looks shiny or anything that looks pretty or anything exotic looking. And they are a band of fellows that aren't the nicest and they uh, kind of treat all the other people at the auction like crap. <laughs> we saw they were looking at this car. Now, granted, I've kind of developed a reputation at that point over there as the person that knew what they were looking for when they were looking at Subarus. And I looked on the passenger side and saw that the CV boot was torn. Now, I didn't say anything, but what I did do is take my finger underneath the turbo and wipe the CV axle grease out from underneath the bell mouth downpipe, because it has an NVIDIA bell mouth downpipe on it, wipe the axle grease out that's slung onto the underside of the downpipe, look at it while they're standing right behind me, and just smile and walk away. I don't know what went through their heads after that, but they definitely didn't bid on the car. I'm pretty sure they thought that something was very wrong with it because of the fluid that was on my hand. And if you aren't familiar with CV axle grease, it's extremely tacky and uh, very thick, very putty-like in nature. So it doesn't really look like most things that go in your car, but they are designed to lubricate the CV joints that are inside of the axle. And it's pretty thick and gross stuff. And it's green or like tar colored if they're old. Now this car was classified as a run and drive, which means that it starts and it'll roll forward and backwards. Whether or not it's something that will immediately go on the road, they disclaimer all their vehicles, but you could clearly tell that since the belts were sheared off and all the uh, radiator bits, the fan shroud and the radiator itself were pushed into the pulleys, um, that thing wasn't going anywhere. Now we're the type of people that kind of carry tools and anticipate for the worst in the back of our cars. So we had a uh, couple of pry bar bits that we were able to force in there and kind of move the radiator away from the pulleys. And this is after we had purchased the vehicle, obviously. And uh, got out in the parking lot and it started up without a jump. No problems. Sat for three months and started right up after an accident. Those band of merry fellows that I mentioned earlier, they were at the gate not looking all that happy. <laughs> so then I started doing what you normally do with a car when you start uh, your first process of owning it and you clean it out. While I was cleaning the vehicle out, I had stumbled across a receipt for a local grocery store called Safeway out in Hawaii. And the gentleman had used his loyalty card there, which had his first and last name attached to it. Really cool about that is there's this invention called Facebook. I punched in his name on Facebook. He ended up being a really cool guy. He still had the access port for the vehicle and he sold me that with the stock parts, extremely, extremely cheap. So shout out to you, sir. Another thing we couldn't get in Hawaii was E85, and some people could get it if you knew the right people, but uh, I was not one of those people, so the car is not currently set up for E85. It's one of my long-term goals, but uh, that's probably gonna happen once I rebuild the motor, because she's sitting at around 185,000 right now. And uh, supposedly, I don't think she makes as much as she did, but uh, she made about just over 300 horsepower and somewhere in the neighborhood of 270 torque, and she wasn't, the fastest by any means but uh, this is definitely a car that I built for more handling than anything else one thing I am extremely proud of with this build is 
it was entirely built on either jack stands in my parents' garage or the last year's worth of a lift, but it was pretty much uh, everything was bolted up by the time it was able to use a lift and I could afford a lift and I still can't afford this lift. So jack stand life it is, right? I've even got the pinch welds to prove it. So if you're looking at the car from a side profile, you'll notice that I have Brembo's on the front, but not in the rear. Now these are 13 plus STI Brembo's paired with DBA 4000 rotors and some AutoZone pads because I cheaped out the last time I did a brake pad change. Don't do that. On the side here, you'll actually see some stickers and everybody knows that stickers add horsepower. And these are actually uniform on both sides. White Line, Mishimoto, and Toyo all have helped me out in some capacity with this build. You will see actually quite a few parts being installed by White Line in the next few videos, and uh, that's gonna be a lot of fun. But in the rear, you'll see not a whole lot because the lighting is terrible, but back here, there is a set of H6 rear rotors for a 2004 Outback H6. They are one inch bigger in diameter than the factory ones. Now, the advantage of that is more surface area to bite on, bolts right up to the same caliper, and the only thing that needs to be changed is the caliper bracket. The brake and suspension systems from 2002 to 2007 on Subaru WRXs and STIs left kind of a lot to be desired for, and a lot of times when you pick up the Subaru second hand, the struts are usually either on their way out or completely gone. So naturally, when something gets old and crusty, you replace it. Now, I was lucky enough to score a sponsorship with White Line fairly recently, but this was back during the days where I was paying full price for everything and uh, really just having a lot of trouble budgeting and trying to figure out what the cheapest possible things I could do for the car without breaking the bank. And my answer to that was suspension and drivetrain bushings. That also allowed me to learn very quickly about the suspension components on my car and the brake components on my car and how I can upgrade certain things without over upgrading, which apparently is a thing. I realized that recently. You never want to put race parts on a street car. And this was my kind of platform where I learned about all that and what's not good on the street and what products are great on the track but terrible for daily driving. A lot of suspension companies will actually take the time and produce several different levels of bushing replacements. Some are race, some are street, and some are just comfort. And comfort is like one step above OE, which is original equipment, and they're pretty soft but also very rigid at the same time without having to worry about things falling apart on you down the road. The front of the car is actually one of my favorite parts of the car. The entire front end, aside from the fenders and the bumper, are all off of a version 7 STI. I actually was able to score the front clip for actually a pretty, pretty cheap price and I think it looks a lot more aggressive than the stock one. The wagons are a little funky because if you want a wider stance, you can get the sedan fenders and sedan front bumper. However, that whole rear quarter panel back there, if that doesn't get molded with a custom body kit, it looks really funky. So I decided to stick with what I knew and went with a version seven hood, version seven hood scoop, version seven top mount intercooler splitter that also sprays water. Yes, it works. Yes, it's also plumbed to my uh, rear wiper. And whenever I hit that, it uh, sprays water on my intercooler. So fun fact, if you ever see my rear wiper arm going back and forth, it's usually because I'm spraying water on the intercooler manually. The headlights are actual JDM version seven STI headlights. These are not the super fancy UK 300s or anything, but this was actually my favorite generation of bug eye headlight. Now I have some eBay <laughs> fog light covers on the front because if it's gonna get hit, I'd rather it be cheap. And you'll notice that my hella horns are stacked off to one side to make room for this beautiful Mishimoto oil cooler we have in here. Because in Florida, you need all the cooling you can get. Under the hood isn't all that impressive. It still leaves a lot for improvement. We currently have a K&N Typhoon intake on here, mated to a uh, upgrade turbo inlet hose, full Mishimoto ancillary hose kit, and uh, quite a few memes stacked around in here. Big shout out to Optima for their yellow top series. The last one I had for my car lasted about six years and it was transplanted to several different Subarus. And this is my second one that I've owned and it hasn't failed me yet and I have quite a few electronics hooked up to the car. Now, everything on here you'll see is very, very 
very gauged towards cooling. And it's still a streetable car. There's nothing 100% crazy done to it. But I have uh, a full Mishimoto cooling kit on here and I could not be happier. I had mentioned that there were a few memes on here. This one kind of folded on me. It made me sad, but this is one of my favorites. It says bags are for trash bins because personally, I don't believe in air suspension for street cars. Fight me. Over here, it's a joke because unless you're rear wheel drive, you're gonna break something. Do you know the way? You don't know the way. I'm also running a uh, Forge recirculated bypass valve on here. A couple of grim speed bits. I like this radiator shroud in particular because they make a tool tray. I think it's a joke because they know you're going to be working on the car all the time because it's a modified Subaru. Is my makeshift water shield using my old Hawaii license plate. That right there is some proof that this car did in fact come from Hawaii. Out of everything on the entire car, the interior will forever be my favorite. Now we are currently sitting on version 7 STI seats. They were a collab from Recaro back in the early 2000s that were Japan only. I did not swap the seat rails, so you will see that this seat is actually the driver's seat and this seat's actually the passenger seat, which makes it quite the pain when you're trying to adjust your seat and you can't because you don't have the same knob adjustments as your passenger does. A few years back, a good friend of mine actually had his car go up in flames on the side of a highway and ever since then I've carried a fire extinguisher. And that's probably uh, one of my only safety features really in this car aside from the seatbelt. The cluster is actually out of an 06 WRX. Contrary to popular belief, they actually do bolt right in. The only thing you'll need to take care of is the ABS light that will pop on with the wiring. And that can be resolved by just taking a quick search on Nasioc and you'll be able to see what you're looking for. This car has been on Tale of the Dragon and it ran in about four times, give or take. And killboy.com, if you guys don't know, shoots some of the best photos for the dragon coming around corners and whatnot. So that had to go right there. I have quite a few Tale of the Dragon related stickers on this car and it's just because the trip up there was just that awesome. The interior is basically all the blue material was rattle canned and it actually came out pretty good. Now these gauges are actually Pro Sport Evo series gauges and they have quite the nice opening ceremony. You'll notice here I have fuel pressure, oil pressure, boost, oil temperature, and my wide band air fuel ratio gauge. Gauges to me have always been something extremely important because your ECU isn't always the most accurate when it comes to reading things directly. I like to basically mechanically see in real time what my different pressures are and what my different temperatures are. It just makes more sense to me. Plus the added bonus, they look cool. But don't be the guy who has gauges in your car and doesn't know how to read the gauges. She's not exactly cold, so it's not gonna be a cold start, but she's about midway. It'll be a nice little start. The exhaust note on this car is actually extremely tolerable, and that's very surprising due to the fact that I'm running a catless uppipe with an external wastegate 38 millimeter tile, and I am also running a catless downpipe NVIDIA Bellmouth catless downpipe with a catback from Borla called their Hush, and it's called the Borla Hush catback. Now, the Borla Hush catback is the quietest catback in the industry until I kind of hacked it up a little bit. But it was all worth it because right after the downpipe, I welded in an electric cutout. Now this is what I like to refer to as party mode because it gets really loud and makes all sorts of cool noises. The best part about it is you can make all the noise you want and then It's quiet now. One thing worth noting is there is a lot of NVH, which is noise, vibration, and harshness in this car. And it's because, like I had mentioned earlier, this car was built and tailored around my taste in cars. 
Now my taste is also constantly changing, so the parts that are on the car are constantly changing. And it's been a ride. I've had everything from the softest replacement motor and transmission mounts they make all the way to what I'm running now, which is a solid transmission mount from Torque Solution and solid motor mounts from Illuminati. And if you guys haven't heard of Illuminati, they're a small business. They originally started on Instagram and they make some really cool Subaru parts. So shout out Illuminati. It's also worth mentioning that the door cards and carpet came out of a 04 STI. And for all you wagon owners that aren't aware, we actually have the same headliner, the same carpet, and the same door cards as sedans. So, you're welcome. The short shifter I have on the car is a Go Fast Bits 02-07 WRX short shifter. It has three different levels of throw adjustment, and it's a very, very short, very notchy shifter. And I actually personally enjoy it more than the Carboy. Now, again, this is all personal preference, but uh, Carboy is very good for a $100 short shifter. It's actually a very quality part. But if you want some more out of your shifter, definitely check out the go fast bits. But I do get a lot of compliments and comments on my shift knob. I'm very proud of this shift knob because a very close friend of mine gave this to me when I moved from Hawaii to Florida. It's a candy blue powder coated etched WRX five speed shift knob. Now a company named Billet Works also operates off of Instagram and um, they made this. It's actually a uh, one-off design, same color, same everything that uh, my buddy had specified. And he also sent me a note that was a kind of a play on the Fast and Furious 7. If you remember, uh, thought you could leave without saying goodbye. So one of my favorite aspect of the car that has changed quite a bit over the years. It's the outside. Now, just to kind of explain a few things. Uh, down here, it'll buff out, is the uh, company back in Hawaii that is... The only company I trusted to touch my car aside from myself when it came to detailing. Um, it'll buff out detailing. They're on Instagram. That's actually a really good buddy of mine and he does some of the best work I've ever seen. So definitely check him out if you're in the Hawaii area. It took me a while to decide whether or not I wanted to do a vanity plate. And this was kind of a play on how the car sounds at wide open throttle, obviously. And it's very loud with the external wastegate when you're above about 4,000 RPMs. And I figured WAPSH was not only a great way to get the point across and at the same time watch everybody in your rearview mirror try and pronounce it at stoplights. It's actually quite entertaining. Here we have the badge of ownership. This is actually my fourth Subaru. Before this I had a very cool legacy and two junky Foresters and it kind of uh, shaped what I wanted out of a car and it was definitely not those. That's because it is. There's a hacked up sedan factory option diffuser and it looks a little funky, but some days it looks good in the right lighting. Eventually what I wanna do is pull those spats back off and reseal all the tape and do a couple of other things, but you'll notice with the Borla Hush catback, it shares the same twin tip design as the 2002 and 2003 WRX. The only difference is when this was getting welded, we uh, kind of scooched it about a millimeter to the right, and that translated to quite a lot of turn on the back here. So it's a little bit off center, but hey, that's not the fun part of the exhaust. You already know what that one is. Some people with good eyes will remark on the fact that it says Impreza on the back here and not Subaru. That is because when I was driving this car for one of the first times, the S came off and it literally just said Uberu. So I went on, basically went online, went onto a site called Kruber, I think that's how you say it, and they had the JDM option Impreza badging. And it came in a Japanese sealed envelope and everything, and it had a Subaru OEM part number attached to it, and I figured, why not? Over here is my horrible attempt at body work. I was uh, washing the car one day in this beautiful single stage Aspen White, caught the wrong end of the hose, and yanked a bunch of paint off the back. So in an effort to replace that, I kind of just sprayed some crappy paint over it, just to call it for now, because eventually this car is getting Raptor painted. And if you don't know, Black Flag Racing's logo has to be on the back, because those are the roots and those are the homies. Now the side skirts are actually real version 7 STI side skirts from Japan, and they were picked up by, I think, uh, JDM Orlando? 
I believe that's where we went. But it was really cool. We got these for next to nothing. And the old side skirts that were on here were charge speed side skirt knockoffs. And they kind of made me sad. And I didn't really have an excuse to change them out until I took a turn the wrong way in a Wendy's parking lot when I was trying to get a Baconator and I left with severe side skirt damage. Hooray! Now the wheels are another thing I get questions about quite a lot. And they are actual ProDrive P1 18 by eight, five by 100 UK STI wheels. Now the difference between these and the 17 inch is the 18 inch is the desired one. The 17 inch is kind of the cheaper option and they made more of them. They didn't make that many of the uh, 18 by eight ProDrive P1s. And these were the same ones that were on my Legacy and now I've just decided to put them on my WRX. The wheels aren't the cleanest and they need to be refinished, but I like them a lot. They're stamped with the ProDrive logo and the center cap. If you can read it, it says ProDrive and OZ. So they're real. And the best part is they're JIL certified, baby. <laughs> There are so many aspects of this car that I could honestly spend hours talking about. And there's so many stories and cool people that I've met because of this car. And I could really honestly go on for hours about it. But this is the most condensed version that I can give you. Again, it's not a race car, still a street car, but it does have dreams of being a race car. And because of White Line and Mishimoto currently helped me along with this build, this is gonna be possible and I'm really excited to show you guys the process along the way. But in the meantime, if you haven't already, check it out on Instagram. It's just that white bug eye. Or if you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comment section. Like I said, this is more of a blanket type statement on this car. There's a lot more that I could go into and explain. And if this is something that you guys are interested in seeing more of or have any questions about, feel free to leave a comment down below and Thank you so much for taking the time to watch me talk about my car for, I would probably guesstimate around 10, 12 minutes. So enjoy your day and remember that just because you see a car in a junkyard that's got a whole front end compacted on it doesn't mean it's necessarily a piece of junk. Okay, bye.